Welcome to Usability and Human Factors, Human Factors in Healthcare. This is Lecture B. This lo lecture focuses on patient safety and addresses the question as to why errors happen. An important topic is the role of latent conditions that contribute to error. The lecture also differentiates types of human errors in view to better diagnose them. Finally, we consider an integrative or systems approach to adverse events in healthcare. The objectives for this unit, Human Factors in Healthcare, Lecture B, are to describe the different dimensions of the concept of human error and describe a system-centered approach to error and patient safety. We are going to switch gears and focus on patient safety and human error. Patient safety has been an issue of concern for a couple of decades, but the community was galvanized by the Institute of Medicine report titled To Err as Human, published in 2000. This report communicated the shocking fact that 98,000 preventable deaths every single year are attributable to human error. According to research published by Macaray in 2016, this happens to be the third leading cause of death in this country. The Harvard Medical Practice Study was published several years ago prior to the Institute of Medicine or IOM to Err as Human report and was a landmark study at the time. Based on an extensive review of patient charts in New York State, researchers were able to determine that an adverse event occurred in almost 4% of the cases. An adverse event refers to any unfavorable change in health or side effect that occurs in a patient who is receiving a treatment. They further determined that almost 70% of these adverse events were caused by errors and more than a quarter were due to negligence. We have established that errors are a matter of serious concern. Let's take a step back and analyze the nature of errors. According to one of the pioneers in this field, James Reason, error is the failure of a planned sequence of mental or physical activities to achieve its intended outcome when these failures cannot be attributed to chance. Too often the term human error connotates blame and a search for the guilty culprits, suggesting some sort of human deficiency or irresponsible behavior. Often we cannot isolate a single cause. Human factors researchers emphasize the need for a systems-centered approach. James Reason introduced an important distinction between latent and active failures. Active failure represents the face of error. The effects of active failure are immediately felt. In healthcare, active failures are committed by providers such as nurses, physicians, or pharmacists who are actively responding to patient needs. Examples would be giving a medication to the wrong patient or performing the wrong surgical procedure. Something that is latent means that it is hidden or concealed. So in this context, latent conditions are less visible, but equally important. Latent conditions are enduring systemic problems that may not be evident for some time, but when combined with other system problems, they weaken the system defenses and make errors possible. There is a lengthy list of la potential latent conditions, including poor interface design of important technologies, communication breakdown between key actors, gaps in supervision, incorrect in equipment installation, and hidden software bugs. Other latent conditions include fast-paced production schedules, such as in a company that needs to release software on a specific schedule, unworkable procedures, extended work hours, staffing problems, and inadequate training are all examples of latent conditions. Other significant examples is the absence of a safety culture in the workplace, a culture that emphasizes safe practices and the reporting of any conditions that are potentially dangerous. These conditions exist to some extent in every institution, but can manifest themselves when the situ situation is exposed to a stressor, such as an increase in the volume of work. We can only analyze errors after they happen. Errors often seem to be glaring blunders after the fact. This leads to blame assignment or the search for a single cause. However, it is exceedingly difficult to recreate the situational context, stress, shifting attention demands, and competing goals that characterize a situation prior to the occurrence of an error. This retrospective analysis is subject to a phenomenon called hindsight bias. 
Hindsight bias masks the dilemmas, uncertainties, demands, and other latent conditions that were in place or occurring prior to the mishap. Things simply look very different when you are looking back at a situation with 2020 hindsight and a more nuanced and system-centered approach is warranted. The Space Shuttle Challenger disaster in 1986 and the Three Mile Island nuclear reactor accident in 1979 represent watershed events in the history of human factors analysis. In both cases, careful scrutiny of the events revealed multiple faults. In the the case of the Challenger disaster, the proximal cause of the accident was the failure of an O-ring seal causing a booster rocket to explode at takeoff. However, closer study revealed a litany of latent conditions, including poor communications and lack of preparation for cold weather conditions that enabled such a disaster to occur. As a result, the shuttle exploded and all eight, eight astronauts were killed. According to the World Nuclear Association, quote, the Chernobyl accident in 1986 was the result of a flawed reactor design that was operated with inadequate, inadequately trained personnel, end quote. They further state that, quote, it was a direct consequence of Cold War isolation and the resulting lack of any safety culture, end quote. In 2010, the offshore drilling rig Deepwater Horizon exploded, leading to the disastrous oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. According to BP's investigation of the disaster, eight factors contributed to the explosion. The report summarized the findings by stating, quote, the team did not identify any single action or inaction that caused this accident. Rather, a complex and interlinked series of mechanical failures, human judgments, engineering design, Operational implementation and team interfaces came together to allow the initiation and escalation of the accident. Multiple companies, work teams, and circumstances were involved over time. James Reason uses a Swiss cheese metaphor to explain the sequence of events or circumstances that lead to errors. The far end that is most visible to us is the active failure which may result from someone having committed an unsafe act. However, there is a set of conditions in the form of latent failures that render an organization like a hospital more susceptible to a mishap or adverse event. There are a series of holes that are just large enough to weaken one's defenses and make the circumstances ripe for human error. Now we will introduce a couple of important distinctions that will help us understand the nature of human error. We can distinguish between slips, in which the actor selected the appropriate course of action, but it was executed inappropriately. In contrast, a mistake involves an an inappropriate course of action reflecting an er erroneous judgment or inference, e.g. a wrong diagnosis or misreading of an x-ray. Mistakes may be either knowledge-based, owing to factors such as incorrect knowledge, biases, e.g. confirmation bias, working memory is overburdened, or they may be rule-based, in which case the correct knowledge was available, but there was a problem in applying the rules or guidelines. For example, misreading a problem, i.e. the patient's illness is worse than perceived, may lead to the wrong selection of rules which determines the treatment strategy. Let's consider a couple of examples. Mr. B is a 45-year-old male being treated for dehydration secondary to nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Mr. B has been in the intensive care unit for four days, receiving intravenous fluids via an IV catheter in his right forearm. As Mr. B stabilizes, the physician orders to start PO fluids, that is, fluids by mouth, and discontinue the IV fluids. Note, the order is to discontinue the IV fluids, not the IV. Typically, the RN will stop the IV fluid and convert the IV to a saline lock that may be used for intermittent infusions as necessary. Unfortunately, the nurse removed the entire IV catheter when it should have been converted to a saline drip. This capture error can be classified as a slip, automatic use of a well-learned routine that overrides the current intended activity. The nurse intended to convert the IV to a saline drip, however, she discontinued all fluids unintentionally. It was an omission rather than a failure due to a misunderstanding of the situation or lack of knowledge. 
It's a familiar action performed in the wrong way. Let's assume a nurse changed the settings of an infusion pump to administer medications at a rate four times the default value. A second nurse who takes over the responsibility for the first nurse's patient assumes that the setting of the pump is at the default value and administers a certain medication resulting in an overdose. This is a mistake known as a mode error. A mode error arises when we perform an action appropriate for one mode, but we are mistakenly in another mode and don't realize it. For example, erroneously assuming that your car is in cruise control mode, that your camera is set for automatic rather than manual focus, or that your iPod is set to shuffle are common examples of mode errors. Let's consider another case. Mr. Jones is assigned to a team of nurses for the day shift. One nurse is responsible for giving all of the medication to the patients on the team. The other nurse is responsible for all assessments and treatments. Mr. Jones complains of pain to the treatment nurse. Rather than delay the administration of the pain medication while waiting for the medication nurse, the treatment nurse obtains the narcotic and administers it to Mr. Jones. The treatment nurse forgets to document on the medication record that she had given Mr. Jones some Demerol for pain. When making her rounds, the medication nurse asks Mr. Jones if he is in pain. Mr. Jones again replies yes. The medication nurse reviews the medication record and notes that there is no documentation of pain medication given. Therefore, she medicates Mr. Jones with Demerol again. Within one hour, Mr. Jones is lethargic and has respiratory depression. He has to be transferred to the intensive care unit, ICU, for closer monitoring due to a Demerol overdose. This error is a case of repetition of action slip. This refers to a repetition of a correctly performed action. Each nurse medicated the patient according to the physician's orders. However, due to the error of no documentation, the patient received a repeated dose of Demerol. Unfortunately, errors owing to documentation problems are all too common. Let's come back to a system-centered point of view. The following quote by the authors of To Err as Human nicely captures the interdependence of the healthcare system. Quote, healthcare is composed of a large set of interacting systems paramedics, an ambulatory and ambulatory inpatient care and home health care, testing and imaging laboratories, pharmacies that are connected in loosely coupled but intricate networks of individuals, teams, procedures, regulations, communications, equipment, and devices that function with diffused management in a variable and uncertain environment, end quote. The variable and uncertain environment is typical of healthcare too, and rather atypical of almost any other domain. Nuclear power plants and airplane cockpits can best be construed as tightly coupled systems in which things normally proceed in a rather orderly and routine fashion. It is the breaks from the routine that lead to trouble. On the other hand, the practice of medicine is more complex and varied with less certain outcomes. Henriksen characterizes a systems approach to adverse events. Errors result from a pattern similar to the Swiss cheese model. However, the different contributing factors are spelled out in greater detail beginning with the external environment and continuing on to different dimensions of the environment such as the human system interface. This figure represents a continuation of the previous slide in introducing sequences of factors that have the potential to contribute to error and adverse events. The individual is always the last chain of defense and the one who will invariably assume some blame for any mishap. Medical errors can be characterized as a progression of events. There is a period of time when everything is operating smoothly. Then some unsafe practice unfolds, resulting in a kind of error, but not necessarily leading to an adverse event. For example, if there is a system of checks and balances that are part of routine practice, or if there is a systematic supervisory process in place, the vast majority of errors will be trapped and diffused in this middle zone, these are what are known as near misses or close calls. If these measures or practices are not in place, an error can propagate and cross the boundary to become an adverse event. At this point, the patient has been harmed. In addition, if an individual is subject to a heavy workload or intense time pressure, 
then that will increase the potential of an error resulting in an adverse event. This concludes Lecture B of Unit 4, Human Factors in Healthcare. The focus in this lecture has been on patient safety and medical errors. We discussed models of errors as, propo as proposed by James Reason and introduced a set of distinctions including slips and mistakes. These distinctions help us to categorize and better understand the factors that constitute medical error. The lecture also introduced a system perspective on medical error. In the next lecture, we more closely examine the issue of workload, discuss patient safety issues as they apply to devices, and introduce the construct of mental models as it is used in human factors work.